This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. Ja, Feuer. Asche. Gebrannte Seiten. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. Hmm. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. Interesting, interesting. The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. The sun. He had a gearstock. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. Interesting. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. Ah, da haben wir ihn doch. Weg aus dem Bett. Oh. Weg. Äh. Öffnet das Fenster. Geht so leichte. Stock ab. Schneide. Oh. Ah! Oh. Okay. Na toll! Warte mal. Geht zur Leiche. Leg den kaputten Stock ab. Schneide das. Das da. Ah, weg, das ist. Ah, oh, jetzt habe ich. Da die Eins deaktiviert. Okay, warte mal, Konzentration. So. Das Fenster. Sieht, was da passiert. Geht runter. Spule vor. Guckt sich das an. Hebt irgendwas auf wahrscheinlich. Oder ich weiß nicht. Richtet sich da den Stock ab. Wieder hoch. Mit dem Stock. Stockt. Stock hier hin. Nimmt da irgendwas am Buch. Und zerschneidet irgendwas. Und wirft es ins Feuer. So, Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? Ah, ich verstehe. Bücher, fettige Fingerabdrücke. 
I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Well now, what a find. A precious jewel concealed inside a book. Na, sieh mal einer an. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Ist bestimmt einiges wert. Können wir ihn darauf ansprechen? Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. Yeah. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp, due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something, or someone, in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Ah, oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Ah, ich habe mich verklickt. Tut mir leid. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Ich meinte eigentlich das Armreif. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then. And not now. But, 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 Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window. But you also noticed a glittering object on the ground. This precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler. And when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window, as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet... I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. That's why it's better to stay at home at night. <laughs> oh, man. It's so light. So, gehen wir mal runter. Ähm, was hätten wir denn noch? Ähm, fragen Sie, wo wir sind. Sollen wir Informationen über den antiken Armreif? Wir gehen jetzt erstmal in die Baker Street, um Informationen zu sammeln über den Armreif. <laughs> oh. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Das wirst du nie erfahren. Nie! Okay. Antiker goldener Armre auf dem Zettel. Ah, Bilderköpfe verziert. Nicht bei der Chemie. Gifte, Verletzungen, Kriminalistik, Transportarten, Zeichen und Symbole. Äh, hier wahrscheinlich auch nicht. Entwicklung. 
Butter, Wissen, das alte Relay, Ökonomie, Technik, Geschichte, äh, tödliche Gefahr, die Botanik, äh, That is That is not Yeah That is not uh. That is Ich hab zu wenig Ich hab zu wenig uh. That is not Oh, echt? Diese wunderschönen antiken Schmuckstücke sind ein Teil der Sammlung, die als Helen hellenistische Schätze bekannt geworden ist. Auf dem Bild sind fünf Wilderköpfe auf Armreif, Halskette und Ringen zu sehen. Alle aus purem Gold. Die fünf Wilder von Mikirini sind seit 1885 verschwunden. Here it is. I need to continue my research in my archives. Was? Artikel über Antiquitäten benutzen. Hm. Äh, ba, 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 ba. 85. Ähm, ein heimtückischer Diebstahl. Gestern Abend wurden die sogenannten hellenistischen Schätze gestohlen, als sie gerade in einer Kutsche vom Britischen Museum zur glasfurt ausstellung der feinen Künste transportiert wurden. Kenneth Butler, der Inhaber eines Pfandhauses, meldete sich bei Scotland Yard und gab an, dass ein Mann versucht habe, ihn seinem Pfandhaus in der Church Street eine Sammlung historischer Kunstwerke zu verkaufen. Danach gelang es der Polizei, den beschriebenen Mann zu verhaften. Einen professionellen Dieb namens Vincent Follier, Follet, der gerade dabei war, London über den Hafen zu verlassen. Er wurde vom Fahrer der Kutsche identifiziert und der die hellenistische Schätze transportiert worden waren. Vincent Foley weigerte sich, Angaben über den Verbleib des restlichen Diebes gut zu machen. Kurz darauf wurde er ins Gefängnis gebracht. Die geschuldeten Kunstschätze sind weiterhin verschwunden. Here it is. One of the victims, Kenneth Butler, was involved in the story of the stolen hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Um. Hm. Ja. Ich würde aber ganz gerne erstmal nach Scotland Yard. Mr. Holmes, whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. Faszinierend. Ich muss mal ganz kurz nochmal wegen Speicherplatz gucken. Ich möchte ein Auge drauf haben. Nicht, dass ich hier noch alles umsonst mache. Okay, weiter geht's. Ich bin gespannt, wie lange der Fall geht. Ich muss auch bald aufhören. Das ist nicht die Asservatenkammer. Warte mal. Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Ich werde eines Tages so eine Psychose äh, entwickeln. Wo ich die ganze Zeit nur Mr. Holmes genannt werden will. Mr. Holmes? 
Mr. Holmes? Oh, ja. Kinger. <lacht> Okay, cool. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. It seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. A cheap watch, bought with his own money, no doubt. Hmm. And an apple. Aww. Oh. Okay, what? Letztes Mal hat er einen Rüber mit zwei Schüssen abgegeben, und war bei dem ich in der Tat. Doppelmord, Kenneth Butler und Brian über Cotty sind Opfer eines Doppelmords geworden, der von einem einzelnen Täter begangen worden ist. Ja. Äh, unterschiedliche Schüsse. Gleichzeitige Schüsse. Mr. Turner konnte Unterschiede zwischen den zwei Schüssen hören, weil in Wahrheit drei Schüsse abgefeuert wurden. Zuerst ein einzelner und direkt nach... Direkt dann nach zwei gleichen... Zeitige Schüsse. Schusspräzision. Mr. Turner konnte Unterschiede zwischen den zwei Schüssen hören, weil diese an verschiedenen Punkten der Hand. Okay. Hä? <lacht> können wir, wir, können, wir können das ja mal testen dann. Haben wir wenigstens eine Aufgabe? Ja, jetzt nicht. Haben wir wenigstens eine Aufgabe? So. Muss mir erstmal den Jungen ansehen. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I I'll tell you everything. Erst einmal check me ihn ab. Was für eine krasse Narbe der doch hier am Gesicht hat. aufgewachsen auf der Straße. Oh ja. Kurz und geschlagen, er hat Widerstand geleistet. Oh. Äh. Was? Für Arbeit? Büroangestellter. Warte! So. Er hat auch so ein Tattoo. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. And then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head, and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead, and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. 
I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray continue. I turned a corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him, but then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds, but I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming, and then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Leighton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm, and what about that? Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps it's strange, but I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I oh, know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Rams. I was just being brave and stupid. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? Now, you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. Ich habe gerade vorhin so einen Niesanfall ge gehabt. Oi, 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 oi. So. Äh. Uh, oh Gott. Ich. ich oh. Warte. Äh. Uh, Leighton Chapman. Leighton Chapman ist der ältere Bruder von Wiggins und zwischen 20 und 30 Jahre alt. Er wuchs auf der Straße auf und hitzköpfig wie er war, wandelte er für eine kriminelle Tat ins. Westgate-Gefängnis. Im Moment lebt er nicht mehr auf der Straße und arbeitet vermutlich als Angestellter in, einer Londoner, in einem Londoner Büro. Oh. Cool. Äh, zwischen Kenntnis und Butler und Prämie zu einem Schlussfest untersuchen sie die Leiche und der nicht. Äh. Gut. Dann machen wir das mit dem Schlusswechsel. Und dann, ähm, gehen wir ins andere ins Pfand, Pfand. Ja, ins Pfandhaus. Guck, was da abgeht. Oh. Oh. Jum, jum. 